of the show. That informs, improves, and inspires racers everywhere. The Northwest Race Report. The Northwest Race Report is brought to you by O'Hagan's Cart Supply, Lebanon, Oregon. You want to win? O'Hagan's wants to help. And by True Tech Automotive, Hazeldale, Washington. Get your car, truck, or tow rig repaired the right way, the True Tech way. And by Scott Seal Coat and Striping, Federal Way. For over 25 years, whether you're sealing or striping, you can count on Scott. And by Southern Oregon's Karting Headquarters, Speed City, LLC. Keeping racers on track with quality support and friendship. You're tuned in to the Northwest Race Report exclusively at terrybridges.com. And now back to your horsepower and performance hosts, Terry Bridges and Glenn Lippy Tower. Oh, what is going on, racers? Welcome to another winning Wednesday here on the Northwest Race Report. I am your horsepower and performance host, Terry Bridges. And uh, joining me in the studio tonight, as always, uh, two of the best, Mr. Glenn Lippy Tower. What's shaking lip? Hey, it's all good in the hood tonight. And the man they call the loader. We'll have to explain that story a little bit to you so you kind of understand it. But Mr. Jeffrey Eden, what's going on, Jeffrey? Well, with it being cold like it was today, it could be one chunk at a time going out of the bucket. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, it is cold out there. I, and I guess Portland is bombarded with uh, with snow. It must be. Jason Susich is uh, our P1, and Matt Straby comes in at P2. Susich is P1? And P3, but we're going to take that away and give it to Dan Watkins as our P3. So. Yes, absolutely. Hey, uh, we got a great show for you tonight. Um, it's going to be kind of just, uh, it's getting towards the holidays, so things are busy. Probably not as uh, much homework being done as probably should be. I'm just going to admit that right now. But um, we're just going to kind of wing it tonight a little bit. Not totally wing it because we're going to be talking about the big upcoming races uh, that are on the calendar, which are the Holiday Classic coming up uh, into this month. The biggie. Which uh, the Northwest Race Report will be at, bringing you live coverage and all kinds of cool stuff. As well as the uh, BK9. Um, if you want to know more about that and who's entered and all that stuff, you need to go to Strebfest Promotions. Uh, WordPress.com. He's got all the cool stuff, pictures, and all kinds of neat stuff on there. So, uh, Matt Streeby doing a nice job uh, there. And then also, if you want to know about anything cart related as far as schedules and dates, uh, you need to go to Northwest Cart Dates. They actually have an app that you can download for your Android phone. They're working on the uh, iOS system for it. That should be out here in the next, well, it should be after the first of the year they should have it up and running. But uh, it's a cool deal. And basically the app takes you directly to their website. You can look up whatever schedules you need to know. I know they have Salem's in there along with a few others. So uh, good stuff. There are Northwest Cart Dates. You want to download that uh, app on your phone because it'll keep you informed of what's going on around here in the Northwest. Uh, our Blue Line Graphics in the seat guest tonight is uh, the man that founded the Holiday Classic some 22 years ago. His name is Joe Torres Sr. So we're going to talk to him around the 7 o'clock hour and just kind of find out some history. we got a little bit of history tidbits there for you. And then we're going to talk about our thoughts on the BK and just all kinds of good stuff. So uh, strap in. Well, actually, you know what we're going to do? How's your week been, Lippy? Mine's been uh, cold, and I work outside, so it's been cold. Um, but other than that, yeah, I got work coming out my ears, so I'm not complaining. I'm uh, head down, and, and I sunk my last post at uh, 445 tonight. Oh, you posted on the website? No, no. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I, oh. I sunk a post in the oh, ground. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm doing a hundred and some foot of fence. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but dump, but dump. Joy and happiness. Good to see uh, uh, Susich on here, as well as Brian Esquinia and uh, Chizzy and Brent Meyer and uh, the Kelso. Boy, everybody's uh, showing yeah. up tonight. Jeffrey, how's your week been, man? Kind of slow, as it, which is this time of year. Which we get, we get into that. Is right. it? Last Friday, last Friday was a, a skeleton crew. I loaded nine loads all day. 
Well, it just wow. seems like I see a lot of trucks moving, though. It's they're, just they're m- it just depends. It j- yeah, okay. Yeah, well, it's just our jobs right now aren't right aren't, aren't really going so. Wow. Yeah. Well, you had s- what you had. You had some forty some hours of overtime here. What last week or last month or something? Mm, I get usually five to eight a week. So that's pretty good. Yeah, forty hours over time and a half, and and, and at. Probably what twenty five or thirty an hour. I wish. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. it's, it, it's got to be at least twenty an hour, right? No oh. loader works for less than that. Oh no, it's we're in between the numbers. That's, that's cool. That's awesome. It just that, uh, yeah. It's well, I, year. I I drive a brand new loader. I'm not going to complain about. It. <laughs> it has a heater. Sorry, flip. Does it have a CD player and uh, has a nice stereo in it? I can plug my iPod into it, and it all comes through the stereo. What do you listen to while you're on there? Do you listen to the show while you're in your loader ever? Yeah. I've, I've talked used, to I, him for hours while he's <laughs> been loading and working, and it doesn't seem to slow him down one bit. <laughs> I can hear people talking to him all the time, and he's just working, working, working. It's pretty amazing, actually. Wow, that's, that's, well, that's, that's cool. That's the part of having a good headset. <laughs> hey, before we get into uh, our, our race results from the weekend, I want to let you guys know, I posted up, um, but like we told you, we're, we're, we've started, we've had the show for some time. Uh, Jason Suchich was actually the first person uh, to be on it, but it's called In the Groove. And if you go to uh, the, you know, our show page, it, you'll see it under under the shows. You'll click on it and it'll have, of course, the Northwest Race Report, and then it'll have the In the Groove. If you click on that, there is an awesome interview that I got to do uh, this past Friday that came out on Sunday uh, with one of probably Karting's greatest uh, Speedway drivers, uh, and that's Robbie Yao. Um, we get kind of up close and personal. We talk about a lot of different stuff, his childhood and how it was and how he did in school and his favorite subjects. I mean, you really get to know him, and so it's it's worth a listen. We ended up... Um, we talked for four hours on the phone, but the actual show was uh, about an hour and a half. So you can go to um, to the uh, to our page and check out in the groove, or it's on my face. It's on the Facebook page. You can just click on the link and follow it there. Um, but it's it's really a cool. It was really cool uh, getting to know him, and I think the show is going to be pretty good. I think we're going to have some interesting stuff on it. And and it's worth uh, it's worth checking out, I believe. So, I just wanted to clear that up because I know Daryl Kelso said he tried, and there were some changes there. And really, it's only because it kind of looks the same as our regular show, but it is a little bit different. And you've got to just you just got to go to the page, check it out. Go to the Facebook page and click on it. It'll take you right to it. Uh, Robbie Yao, it's pretty good. He's also going to be doing some articles uh, for the website. I've already got one that we're just in the process of editing. And man, I'm telling you, he gives you mixture ratios for the uh, his tire conditioners. He tells you how he puts them on. He he reveals uh, a lot of stuff. Not a lot in the first one, but he's going to do it. He's going to spread it out over the week. So he's got the pre race stuff that he conditions with. He's got uh, he's going to talk to you about how he preps his tires at the track, what he uses. You'll be just shocked to know that um, new tires are not a thing that he uses a lot of. Believe that or not, but it's true. So you guys screaming new tires, I don't even want to hear it because Yao wins on used tires quite a bit. So do we. So, I mean, there there you have it. You just got to check out the interview, check out what he said. It's pretty awesome. And and he'll have more of that as he gets his stories up on the uh, his little uh, posts up on there. Yeah, I agree with him. That's what, with the modified, we use all, yeah. very seldom do we get a new tire. Exactly. Well, well, you got some that are screaming you got to have new tires for every race if you want to, you know, run up front. Well, and so we, we have a few of them, Tom Sweatman. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and that's fine if you want to do that. If but you can afford it. It's nice to know that you don't have to, but 
in some of the classes where you can't prep, I, I know that's uh, what's desired is new tires over prep tires because you can't prep. But, you know, other, th other than that, it, it's, it really is personal preference. And, uh, geez, look at everybody showing up tonight. We got uh, Scott McDowell, the boss man, on Ooh. here. Rick Worley and uh, Dennis Stanley and Jamie Bridges. And uh, look there, oh, there's one. Was Jamie Bridges on there? One time's on here. Joe Ransom, Renee Oh, Angel. my goodness. I mean, we're just pulling them in today well say hi to my sister she's tuning in tonight that's pretty awesome it is talk about awesome. make my week wow wait that's great hi sister i love you uh so yeah so what do you say we get into these results well, and, well, well, well one second you you okay. asked uh both how jeff and i were doing how yeah. are you doing oh i'm doing you know me i'm always no i'm, well, doing, know, I'm but, doing good but we don't get that side of it so how are you i'm, I'm doing good i'm doing good um yeah. Staying busy? Yeah. I mean, this, people don't realize this, I mean, this does keep you busy, it, or at sure. least it, it should. <laughs> yeah, I'm, right. I'm not disputing that one bit, but you I think know, everybody else needs to know that. But, but what, it, it, it is. just saying he didn't do his homework? I, I didn't <laughs> this week. I mean, it, sometimes it is. It's it's uh, kind of, but yeah, but not complaining. It's awesome. The show's awesome. I'm having a good time doing it. I'm, I, I love the fact that you guys are involved. So, I mean, I'm. Man, I, I couldn't be uh, I couldn't be happier. I'm, I'm excited. We get to go down to the classic. I'm I'm work's going good. Yeah, I'm I'm doing uh, good. Thanks for asking. That yeah. that's uh that's that's super cool. Uh, and then we got Lippy and I do have a cool story we're gonna tell, but we'll we'll tell that after the results. Um, so you guys, but it, it's one of the coolest stories. Um, it just it, it'll blow you away. Yeah. So stay with us on that one. But uh, let's let's uh, we should do some results, don't you think? For sure. Well, we got the Salem Indoor Speedway going on this uh, past weekend. The Cage Carts and their two day show were there, and I just want to you know, there's a couple things with Salem Speedway that ha have happened. Those of you that have followed uh, Jeremy Means, you know he got hurt a little while ago. But you know, I I picked up a piece of paper from Bob Leach and this is something that everybody sees when they get to the racetrack and they sign up and it's the adult and minor release and waiver of liability and on here the very first paragraph that's in a box it says we understand that the competitor provides their own medical insurance and that the track promoter slash sanctioning body does not provide riders with medical insurance. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows, because I went in there signing the release thinking it was like a normal race, right? And it's not. Because uh, when you go to an IKF race or a Gold Cup or anything like that, you buy a pit pass, you're pretty much, you're, you're covered. covered. You're covered. So, uh, you know, I've been signing that for long. So when Jeremy had his deal, I was kind of like, yeah, what's up with that? But, if you read it, uh, and then right before you sign it, it also says, we have read the above waiver and release and understand that we give up substantial rights by signing it and sign it voluntarily without inducements. So there you have it. This is Make sure you know it. This is uh, standard procedure for 90% of the facilities around here. It's not um, not a shocker, I don't think, uh, but I do think you're right. I think a lot of people were under the assumption, uh, but, you know, uh, Salem doesn't do it. Uh, Rainier doesn't uh, cover people, uh, and, and also Monroe, they don't cover people either. It, uh, when you're signing that stuff, you're, you're signing away any of your rights. And it's not that it's a bad thing, but, yeah, people do need to be uh, aware of it because that, that is what's happening uh, for the, uh, well, is as long as I'm aware of, our club has been offering insurance, and we do provide it for people, and that's why the things do cost a little bit more at our club. But, yeah, I mean, uh, everybody needs to know about that and, and know that it's not there. So it, uh, we're involved in a motorsport that uh, it, it is dangerous. So you, you should be aware of that. Yeah, and, and it's not to make, uh, hey, Mr. Diotti, what's up? You know, I'm not trying to 
poke anybody. I just want to make sure people understand they know because I and know. Yeah. And it's easy to to think, man, I'm, I've been to this race and that race and I've been covered. So just to make sure you know that, you know, he had talked about bringing Aflac in there. I guess Aflac had come in uh, a couple years ago and, and offered them uh, to sign up for the Aflac in case they got hurt because they, you know, they pay if you're off work or whatever. And he said, surprisingly, uh, quite a few people signed up for it. So, I mean, it's it's pretty reasonable. It's like, I don't know, you can get a Af- coverage for like 28 bucks or something. So, I mean, it's Aflac's not-, not a bad deal by any means, but to, to, to supply anybody with any kind of insurance that is actually useful, it costs money, and that adds to the bottom dollar that we all pay to get in there. So... You know, if you want to complain about it and and uh, force the issue, then, you know, I'm sure he can come up with the same insurance that everybody else runs. But it's going to, you know, the trickle down effect ends up in your pocket. So, you know, everybody has to make that choice. Right. Well, that was like down at Lebanon when they Thursday night practice. There was no insurance for Thursday night practice all the time we were down there. Yeah. I mean, I, and nobody told you that, though. Well, well we knew it. Oh, okay, everybody good. there knew it. I mean, ten dollars to. Oh well, yeah, that, yeah. right. <laughs> you can pretty much figure that out yourself. Yeah, that was he just give you the use of facility, and he everybody knew it. Yeah. Well, when I asked him, I said, "Well, then you know, so when I come to get out, what if people say, well, 'Well, I'm not. I don't need to pay ten dollars for pit pass. I, 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 I have my own insurance.' So, and Bob says, "Well, that's why we give you an option. We give you two options. You can pay the ten dollars and go in, or you can turn around and drive off." Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's pretty simple. So basically, that's their charge is the ten dollars to get in, whether you it's a pit pass or not. That's what he charges. So Saturday results results for the open cage cards, the five horse open, Sizzling Seth. He is your current point leader, and he wins it over Skylar Weinbarger. Jojo Pataglia was third, uh, one twenty five CC. Those ages nine to sixteen, nine years old in a one twenty five. Wow. Wow. Uh, Carson Borden wins it. Now, Carson is Glenn's son. Yes. Second place, Cole Borden, is Riley's son. Yes. There's a lot of Bordens. (laughs) Cole is your current point leader. Miles Massey is second. And so, uh, Miles Massey was third. Seth Riggs was fourth. The 250s. Who do you think won the 250s? His name is Lane Taylor. I was going to say that. That kid is tough. He is he is super tough. He is your current point leader. And McLean Bedoin was second. Alex Reich, that is Jason Suchich's son, uh, he was third. And he debuted his uh, brand new BLG cart, first time in a 250, and he finishes up third. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, another guy that's impressive, Bradley Lynn was fourth, and Kyle Rolls. Hasn't had quite the season uh, you would expect that of Kyle, but he has moved up. So it's a tough class. It is a tough class. Um, Saturday night, the uh, open cagers were uh, there, and boy, Devin Borden wins it. Now you know it wasn't too long ago. He this is just really his first time since stepping up in a five hundred. So he beats Christian Osborne, Duke Johnson third, Casey Starr fourth and Scotty Fox. Man, I wish I would have been there. Scotty Fox was last year's Roseburg champ and he's always exciting to watch. Um Devin Borden is your point leader, Duke Johnson is second and Christian Osborne is third after Sunday's results. Um 600 micros, the opens, Jesse Schlotfeld wins it, Lindsay Barney second. Wow, she got beat. Miss Lindsay did. That was Saturday. Yeah, that was Saturday. I said after Sunday's results, but which Lippy will have here very shortly. Lindsey Barney is your current point leader. Bailey Jean Suchich is second, four points back, and then uh, about twenty-four pa- uh, points back from Bailey Jean. And third is Doug Pirtle. Uh Six hundred micro restricted. Ben Ferrara won that. That doesn't surprise me. He ran pretty good the last time I watched him. Theron Smith was second. Victoria Wolf third. Ferrara is your points leader. And let's see here. The Dwarfs uh, under review. So there must have been a question as to who won that. Uh, mini stocks. It was Dale Holland, Thomas Kirby, Doug Pirtle. One, two, three. Holland is your point leader. 
And in the Pro Fours, it was Toby Ferrando, Tom Ferrando, and Brian Finney. Billy Jack was fourth, Thomas Ferrando fifth. That was Saturday and Saturday night at Salem. Um, what do you got, Lippe? You got Sunday's results. I do have Sunday's results. Oh, wait, results. I forgot I forgot this. There, I'll get I'll get hung. Uh, quarter midget animal went to Samuel Strange, and Cody Greer was second, and then Cody Greer was all by himself in quarter midget senior. Now it's you, Lip. I'm kind of jealous at the moment because Tim Chase is uh, talking about having an elk back strap for dinner tonight. So I'm a little bit distracted because I do like my game food. So thank you for that, Tim Chase. Not. So Sunday results. Uh, Pee Wee Non Subaru Jake Waldall comes in number one feature winner. Tanner uh, Gentry comes in second. And Patrick Batalgia. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Comes in third. James Hemblin comes in uh, fourth on that one. Uh, Pee Wee Subaru. Looks like uh, Jeremy Lang uh, unbeaten and uh, coming in number one spot. And Samuel Strange is coming in second. And Bree Smith or Brew Smith comes in third. And then we got the uh, box stock, and it looks like uh, looks like Brianna Fuller, which I'm guess is out of Speed City. Uh huh. That and, is correct. Uh, comes in number one, and then Jaden Trump or Troop comes in uh, second. Trump. Trump. Yep. The Trump. Cow, the cowboy. Uh, the cowboy. Nice. I like that. And then uh, Algona Winham. Oh, Alonia Win Winningham. Yes. You see, I struggle with this, this stuff. Is a, it's a mouthful. That's the alphabet right there. Yeah, Taylor Fuller <laughs> coming in fourth <laughs> on that one. And there's 12 in this class, so, uh, you know, keep them coming, guys. Box stock is looking really great. I see a Borden name all the way down there at the bottom, which is Ashley. So, uh, shout out to her. That's probably going to be... Uh, uh, near the front of uh, her uh, racing career, so good job for her and and the Waldall, or excuse me, and the uh, Borden family. So, and uh, then on to five horse open, uh, Sizzling Seth Waldall undefeated so far in that class. Uh, it's got a good motor underneath that kid. So, uh, and then uh, looks like uh, Judal. Uh, Let's see what we got. Second one down on that one. Oh, that's Jojo Batalgia. Jojo Batalgia. Yeah. So, as usual, I struggle with those. And then Cole Patrick coming in, uh, newest BLG member there, running the rap on that one. Uh, and then Skylar Weinberg and Alexandria Schultz coming in fifth on that one. Nice. 125, uh, Carlson Borden. And Cole Borden coming in second. Seth Riggs is third. Miles Massey is fourth. And Jerry Fonfara bringing up the back on that one. They're still down on that 125 in. So hopefully Fonfara will move up on the uh, rankings on that one. So 250 is Lane Taylor. Been hearing that kid's name for quite a while now. And it's good to see him on top. And, uh, and carrying that through, uh, been watching him come through quarter midgets all the way up now. And uh, great driver, great family. Bradley Ling uh, looks like coming in second. Kyle Rolls coming in third. Alex Alex Rolich coming in fourth. You know who that is, don't you? No, I don't. That's McDowell's grandson. Rolwich? No, 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 no. It's Alex. Oh, Alex, not Oliver. Okay. Right, exactly. Okay. And uh, looks like uh, 500s, Devin Borden coming in number one on that one, Duke Johnson number two, and Tyler Roberts number three, Kelsey Ferrito coming in fourth on that one, so. Nice. I think, is it, uh, it's Ferrando, I think. Ferrando. Yeah. yeah I struggle. They're racing the Ferrando. It's all right. No problem. And looks like uh, quarter midgets. Animal looks like uh, who is that? Is it strange? No, he comes in second. It's uh, Cody. 
Cody Greer. Oh, yeah. Coming, nice. Good coming for Cody. in number one. And uh, Samuel Strange coming in number two. Quarter midget. Uh, looks like Cody Greer number one on that one. 600 open micro is uh, Lindsey Bailey. And Barney. Barney. And then uh, Jesse Schofield. Yep. Coming in second. And Doug. Pitt- per- Pertle. Pertle coming in third on that one. Nice. And Bailey Jean Susich, I believe, blue motor on that one. So dad's got some work to do. And uh, restricted uh, 600 micro Ben Ferrito. Ferrara. Ferrara. Yep. And uh, Victoria Wolf and Paul Synergic. Yeah, that's a tough one. I, I, I struggle with that one, too. That's a that's a tough one. So hopefully I got that one right and didn't murder it too bad. So that's what's uh, looking like our Sunday results. Right on. And then we go up the freeway up I-5 here past uh, Olympia, past Seattle to Monroe, where WHR had their uh, Sunday show. Uh, KT Light, they had 16 entries. Uh, Bobby Funkhauser won it. Reese Wickard second. Paul Hoppy, I, I got pronunciation, uh, was third. <laughs> KT Heavy had 20. And it was Nick Tuller. Now, I thought it was Nick Tucker, but no. Nick Tuller, Spencer Condi- uh, Constance, and Keith Wickard. Uh, Pearl had 16 entries in it. Dallas Melby wins that. Spencer Constance second. And Bobby Funkhauser third. Open had eight. Dallas Melby took it. Levi Harless was second. And Tyler Weber was third. T. Webb nice. was third and open. Good for him. Uh, let's see here. 40-plus had six. Uh, entries. Keith Wickard won it. Jay Barnes and uh, Tony Bundy. Schoolboy had five, and it was a uh, Kasori Sundholm winning it. That's my first time seeing Kasori. Uh, Tyler McLeod and Cassidy Sundholm third. Mini cart went to a uh, Braden Wager. Uh, Brooklyn Constant second. Jaden Roberts third. Uh, they had uh, the minis had six. The schoolboys had five. The quarter midgets had ten. Uh, and it was Jessen Jacobson, Samantha Schwartz, and Braden Wager, one, two, three. And then Junior Sprints, they only had two. And it was uh, Jessen Jacobson and McKenna Morgan. So that's what was going on down there or up there at um, WHR, at Monroe. Monroe. And, you know, I, I just did. I downloaded a few of them because they had uh, this weekend, the, they had the big Hedrick Waters 100 for the clones um and austin yarborough won that jason scruggs was second and chad glover third uh clone light went to jason scruggs and austin yarborough second and jr tippins those are three tough names right there uh, was third medium was uh was the blake carlisle was first jason scruggs second and brent bridges huh brent bridges was third and then in the Super Pro, it was Jacob Davis, Taylor Weaver, and Joe Bunch. That was from the Hedrick Waters uh, 100 Pro. So Austin Yarbrough, hey, check this out, you guys. So he wins it, right? And I'm talking to Phil Combs uh, on Facebook. And he said uh, that he won. It was his winnings for the year were, were 119000 and change. What? Dude went and bought himself a... Uh, a brand new car with uh with this with this winnings and he said i said well what do they what do they do for taxes and he said it's either 10 20 or 30 percent depending on how much you win all righty so those guys are making over a hundred thousand dollars racing go-karts not around here no sir N- no mm-hmm. Mm-mm. dude ain't doing that in any race right? hardly <laughs> i'm telling you the, the clone is big business back there it's, it's crazy One hundred nineteen thousand and change and it's less than a motor i don't get it wow i mean i just uh that, that's just awesome and, and just to let you guys know too upcoming events at salem uh, are this weekend the speedways and then january 14th and 15th so there's only really there's only three races until bk9 yep so those of you that haven't it's been actually only two where do you get three well, you got this weekend, mm-hmm. then you have the 14th, and then you have the 15th, and mm-hmm. then oh, yeah, yeah, and okay. then you have that. Okay. And the official uh, overnight stays for the Salem Speedway are the Hampton Inn, 
and the Shiloh Inn. And make sure you use the uh, discount code Speedway Racer. You must say this in order to get the discount. So um, just letting you know, January 15th is a two-day show, so make sure you plan for that now. Um, the last two-day, he said 13 stuck around, not enough to even run a practice. So uh, it says the Speedway's wanted more time. I'm trying to get it for you, so you got to back me up. The December 31st race is canceled, but there will be open practice on December 30th. So the 31st is canceled. The 30th, they are having open practice. Don't forget, too, that the race receivers now, I guess there's an older style. They're going to expire any day, so you need to upgrade to the new blue box. So if your transponder doesn't read, you get no points, and you get no finishing points. So there you have it. I also see that he's designating a uh, gas station uh, for the LO206. I'm not sure whether it's going to bleed over into the uh, uh, other classes, such as um, Predator or not, but uh, he's designated gas station for the LO206, and he will be running the uh, Digitron fuel tester this weekend. So uh, be prepared, and if you're going down for that class, be sure and stop by the uh, station. It's off of exit 258. The address is 4170 Portland Road uh, Northeast in Salem, and you want to use it from the uh, 92 octane uh, pump, premium gas. Yeah, let's see if we can get Joe. I don't know where he is, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a buzz myself and. Uh... So if you're heading down to Salem this weekend, uh, be sure and gas up. Call tune while waiting for the person you are calling to answer. Be sure and uh, take care of that. Oh, ZZ Top. Nice. Hey, Joe yeah, Torres. Sir. You're there. You are there. Well, hang tight, brother. Hang on. Your favorite drivers and people of interest in the motorsports world. It's time for In the Seat, powered by Blue Line Graphics. Our guest tonight, uh, some 22 years ago, uh, founded the uh, Holiday Classic. And believe it or not, uh, there was a time when the Classic was, uh, they were getting around uh, four straight years. They had over 400 entries. Welcome, my guest to the show, Mr. Joe Torres Sr. What's going on, Joe Torres? Uh, not too much. Just uh, hanging out tonight. Are you working on go karts? Uh, I was earlier. Yes, sir. You're not now. Oh no, no. It's uh, time to relax and uh, talk on your show. Awesome. So you know, let, so 22 years ago today, you uh, you got in touch with IKF and you told them what. That you wanted to start something big? Well, they uh, used to have a, a big uh, race in uh, Daytona. And uh, IKF never had anything during the Christmas holidays. And so me and Brad Canyon got together and we went to the uh, yearly uh, the IKF, I uh, yeah, the, the IKF, IKF, uh, IKF uh, um, board meeting. Dr- yep, and we presented it, and we presented it to the board, and uh, they uh, molded over, and they decided that they were going to do something that uh, we could have during the Christmas uh, uh, times between Christmas and New Year's. So now. Most people know it just as the event of the Holiday Classic was just, you know, like this year. It's going to be uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But tell the listeners how that show used to be when you ran it all week. Well, uh, we actually had uh, three venues. We had uh, the asphalt track, which was at PKRA. And then we had the enduro race, which was run at PIR at the time. And we had it running for about four years that way. And uh, after the races were over, we would have a banquet. 
and present each venue with the championship trophies for their classes. And we had a dinner and uh, had it catered and um, we had it done for about four years. And then I guess the participation in the enduro race kind of weaned. And so um, also uh, the asphalt uh, track, they, they couldn't get their participation up high enough. And so they actually uh, left it, let it go. Wow. But uh, but we uh, we kept it going since uh, let's see, 22 years from 2016 is 1994 or 1993, I presume. That is, uh, and, you know, what's even more impressive is, is that you had road racing, sprint, and speedway all, all going on at the same time during during the week. That, that's yes, pretty cool. Yes, we had. Yes, we did. Wow. And it was really big. It was really big. Um, it was a big venue at the time for four years. And uh, then, like I said, uh, the participation in the Enduros and then the participation in the asphalt race uh, kind of, you know, dropped off. And then so we kept it going. And we, we used to have, you know, uh, a lot of the IKF board members race at the uh, at the dirt and at the asphalt and in the enduros. Wow, that's awesome! Yeah, you're right. It was 1994, so that was wow, boy, is that that's 22 years? Jeez. Wow. Yeah, but but listen to some of the names that were there. Uh, like uh, uh, Ralph Woodard was there. Uh, the Bullers were yeah, there. At our at, at our track, yes. Uh, we had uh, Uncle Frank, uh, Ralph Woodard. We had uh, A.J. Foyt the third and the second that came to our racetrack for many, many years. And then we had um, the Unser family that uh, came and raced with us. Uh, uh, we had uh, Tom Rail. We had... Uh, uh, a lot of the uh, yeah. Didn't you say you had the Turners there as well? They were part uh, of the, the Unser. Turners. Yeah, the Turners were part of the uh, the Unser uh, families. They were cousins or something like that. They they raced there as well, and so we we had a lot of the uh, people at the time that went to the Tulsa shootout come to our races first and tried all of their new stuff for the year at our track. And then, uh, they would, uh, go on to the Tulsa shootout. Wow. That's pretty awesome. Actually. That, that is, that, yes, that's, they, that's awesome. We had quite a, quite a, the, quite a few of the name people that, that went to the, uh, uh, Tulsa shootout, uh, come to our races first. Did Jason Gibb ever come there? Oh, Jason. Yeah. Oh yeah. Jason and his brother, uh, Bill Macedo, uh, Billy Andrews. Uh, yeah, we had quite a few of the California people that came and we had, uh, uh, uh the Jones, uh, that, uh, came from New Mexico we had uh, uh, the uh, the one that uh, had the dirt track in New Mexico. Gosh, I can't remember his name now. That uh, they used to come as well. Wow! So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of history behind this event. Then sounds like to me. Oh yeah, yeah. We used to have uh, the IKF president Brad Swigard as our uh, race director, in fact, for a couple of years. And we had uh, Mona Sturgis that uh, was uh, part of the original IKF group that uh, came and supported us. And uh, uh, she was there for three, four, five years during the Classic and, and came out and uh became uh, the uh, IKF representative for the race. And uh, she was a race director a couple of times during the race. 
Wow, that's pretty cool. Now, did Kurt Burris ever run at, at the uh, Classic? Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he did. Uh, Kurt did, yes, and his grandson did. And uh, I understand that uh, Derek was going to come this year. I t- spoke to him, but I, I'm not sure. I haven't I haven't spoken to him. I'm going to call them and see if they're going to come uh, this year. But Derek, uh, Kurt's brother, he said he was going to come out and race. Oh, that would be cool. Well, I know there's a bunch coming from up here. I know Renee will be there. Um, I'm. Uh, I think Stackman's going. Uh, Kevin White is going. There's there's several from up this way. You're, the Northwest is going to be well represented down there. I do believe. Yeah, Shane Smith is he coming? Yes, Shane at one time will be there. Uh, well, I don't know if is. Uh, I don't know if Sean is Car one? Car is coming or not. I don't know, but. Uh, Chris, Chris, Chris Passanet or oh uh, Passanate, yeah, I think he's coming to yeah, run he's, he's, the Yamaha class. That should be a doozy. Yeah, that's going to be a really good, good, good track uh, race uh, venue for us. They, they, we have a lot of Yamahas that uh, race at our uh, IKF. I mean, at uh, at our Holiday Classic. And also, uh, is Ronnie Cox coming? Uh, I I don't think so. I think Uncle Chuck, his car owner, will be there, but I I think uh, Rocket has to work, so he uh, he won't be. He especially during the holiday, but I guess it's really uh, busy for him. He works for FedEx, so um, I don't think he's going to make it UAS wise. But yeah, the Watkinses will be there running UAS and Junior UAS, as well as King will be running uh, the uh, UAS as well. Yeah, that should be pretty good. You'll have a load of Northwest guys in the UAS. I mean, and even the the Yamaha stuff. Passanante should make things. That should be a real good show there. I'm thinking. But so, how's the dinner yeah. work? Will the awards be given like the old days? Do you guys have a banquet like on Friday night or something? Wherever. No. No, no, we, we, we actually give them out after all of the races are done. We, we give them out right there at the track. Okay. So that would be the same day or on Friday after at all every, of after After every day, the trophies will be given out okay. after the races are done. Nice. Well, that'll be fun then. So there'll be a, at least a two uh, trophy presentations each night then each night we'll have a trophy presentation awesome that'll be great yeah that will be fun boy and, and what's but we don't we don't we don't really unless we have a lot of lot of racers uh we don't get into the night because we start at noon which during that particular time of year it's pretty cold and so the the track stays in. The, the track is fabulous. That that is the best. The best the track is all year long because of the weather and the people that prep our track. It's 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 black as you can't believe how black that track gets. And uh, we had uh, last year or the year before. Uh, I can't remember who. Uh, uh, who uh, the guy was that was running in first place in the main event, the track was so uh, uh, sticky that he blew a tire off the bead. Oh, I think it was leading. I think it was race. Brad Berg, I think. Brad Berg, yes. Yes, he was leading, man, and and the track was so hooked up that he blew a tire off his rim and he lost the race. That That's, that's hooked up. <laughs> that is hooked up. So you better come down there with bead locks on, then. It sounds like <laughs> there's a bunch of yeah, grip. Yeah, well, but... yeah. It, it. Well, I think maybe he had uh, the air pressures too low as well. From what I, I heard from Joe, um, his uh, car owner. So, what classes will you and your son be running? Uh, we'll be running the the Yamaha Straight Rail class. We'll be running the Arizona Unlimited. We'll be running the two UAS classes, and then we'll be running the Yamaha Light and the Yamaha Heavy. Wow. So you're going to be busy. Damn, yeah. You're going to need a, a few uh, crew people there. Yeah, we, 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 have, uh, we have a couple of people that come and help us. 
So now, what's the weather going to be like? You know, you say it, it's still really cold at noon. Yeah, it's uh, it'll it'll get into the the sixties, maybe into the seventies, but uh, in the morning it 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 can get into the forties and and uh, low mid mid forties in the morning. I'll trade you forties for the twenties we got up here. Yeah, no kidding. Burr. Wow. Okay. Well, that's still good. And, and does it cool off really quick at night then too? Well, yeah, <laughs> it does. It it gets down to uh, where the track is. It might be uh, in the high thirties, low forties. Ooh. No shorts. Here, here. Right I thought we were coming down. Yeah, I was thinking, man, shorts, man. I'm gonna be killing it. No. <laughs> no, you're going to have to bring a jacket, boy. I tell you, it's going to get kind of cool. It's going to get kind of cool. Well, maybe the racing will keep it nice and warm. For sure. It should be. Well, uh, yeah, it, it, it does. It's gotten into the 70s occasionally during the day. Well, we'll take that. For sure. Yeah, we'll take that for sure. So uh, is there any good places to eat around there? Oh, yeah. There's... Uh, on Bell Road, you got so many, so many. You got oregano's. You got uh, uh, Texas Roadhouse. You got uh, 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 Red Lobster. You have got uh, uh, Pop uh, Popo's Mexican Restaurant. You got. Oh, uh, there's just so many places on Bell Road, which is just down the street from the track. Well, how about Chinese and, food? Uh, Do you have any good yeah. Chinese food places? Uh, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. We got we got uh, a, a few Chinese restaurants around there. Good deal. We got the Big Hen. We got the Big Hen, uh, and uh, there's uh, uh, there's another one. Uh, 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 China buffet on on Central uh, and uh, I mean on uh, Bell Road, which is right down the street from the 59th Avenue that goes into our track. So yeah, there's there's Chinese, there's uh, Red Lobster, there's uh, uh, Old Chicago. You you had uh, you had Italian me at, restaurants there. You had me at buffet, so we don't need to go any further than that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they got quite a few uh, uh, of the buffets there, too. Well, so what is uh, – do you have any pre-entry ideas? Do you know how many you've got right now, roughly, or, or are you keeping track of that? Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm really not. Uh, I'm sure before it's said and done, we'll probably get over 250 entries, 250. Nice. Wow, that'll wow. be awesome. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Yeah, that's great. This has been on my bucket list, so it's uh, it's going to be a great experience to come down there and call all this and and uh, you know talk to everybody as they're going on to the track and off to the track, and it's uh, I I just can't wait. It's uh, it's going to be such a great deal down there. You guys uh, put on uh, such a great facility and put on such a great show that uh, yeah, it is uh, it's. It should be on everybody's list on the uh, West Coast uh, to make it down to this show. It, it is a definitely a uh, place to be and a thing to do. Well, one of the things that is going to uh, give the UAS uh, racers a little bit of incentive to race the Holiday Classic is the uh, Unlimited All-Star Grand National in September is going to be at aka yeah we're gonna have to start right now uh putting our budget together to make it down to that because that is going to be a great race for sure in a great facility so very very much looking forward to that it's uh it's within our area of coverage so we're really hoping to uh to make a big splash on that one and i think everybody's going to be pretty pleasantly surprised that the uh west coasters are able to keep up with the east coasters so yeah there's uh uh even mark burkfeld uh the originator of the uas he's coming for the uh grand nationals in september it'll be 
uh, the last weekend of September, I think it's the 23rd and the 24th, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in September. Will it will it be hot then? It'll be in the 90s. Yeah, it'll be in the 90s, but it'll be more or less at night, so it it'll it cools off. Good deal. It cools off. So you have lights at that track? Oh yeah. So you run under oh, yeah. you run under the lights. Yes. Oh, well, baby. not at the classic. Not at the classic. No, but at the, the nationals. Classic, we, yeah, at the Nationals, yeah, we'll be running under the lights. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. yeah. Looking forward to that. Well, Joe, thank you, my man, for being on. And uh, we look forward to seeing you down there here in a couple weeks. Yeah, uh, like I said, we've got uh, accommodations for for you. And so we'll, uh, we'll contact you and uh, find out what we have, uh, the accommodations for you, okay? Okay, Joe. Thank you so much, man. All right. All well, right. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Thanks for being on. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Take Bye-bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Joe Torres, the, one of the original founding fathers of the Holiday Classic. Some kind of cool facts there. Definitely. I mean, yep. 22 yep. years. 400. They used to run that whole thing with, you know, Enduros and Sprints. And, it, and he said it was going on at the same time. So, I mean, crazy. That is crazy. But that just lets you know how different it used to be because he said that a lot of the guys would come there and run to get their stuff sorted out before they went back to the uh, to the drillers or the shootout back in Tulsa, Tulsa. Oklahoma. Yeah, that was that is and was a big deal. So yeah, so that that's that, that's kind of nifty. Well, you know, it it has been in years past. I'm gonna say it, it's been a smoking Stephen Chase racetrack. I think he won both days last year. It's uh that And then the year before Diotti won day 2 and uh I think it was maybe Chase that I want to say the that race before but nonetheless you, you, he, Chase has got to be a favorite for that deal. He uh that, Diotti runs good there too though. I mean it, but you know but then you look at Renee what what she, what she's been doing since out here at Salem, I mean, good grief. Um, Chase has got a great program there. They they do their homework. They work hard. So does Diotti, and, and so does Renee. So as far as coming from our area, they're all going to be heavy hitters, and they're going to be there to win. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, this, this race is, uh, is growing. So uh, people coming from all over the place, you know, looking to go down there and make a name or, or make a spot for themselves. So it's uh it's gonna be a great deal and I I, I can't wait. I well, just, can you imagine what that yeah, Yamaha class is gonna be down there? I mean Jeff got a taste of it here a couple of weeks ago. The Yamaha I mean you know, light wasn't that big. Heavy was pretty but I mean if Markham is, it, it, I don't know. If, I hope they're going, but I don't think uh, Renee's just saying that uh, that she's not sure that Passanetti's going. He's not coming down with her. So if he's going down, that means the Markhams are going down themselves. And I truly haven't heard that. So I'm, I'm that'd, that'd not be sure. a shame if he didn't. That would be uh, he, because then we could see who truly is the fastest KT on the West Coast. This is true, but uh yeah, I hope th- I hope they make it. I, I truly do, but uh we'll uh, we'll just have to see. Now, what about the uh the sportsman? The UAS sportsman, that should be a whale of a uh, They have the junior UAS down there. They don't have the sportsman. So the junior UAS, I look for that is to be a really great thing that that should be uh There's uh, no sportsman class like for the adults, like for the old no, they've got some different classes. They have the Junior UAS, which will be running down there in full force, and I'm really look, looking forward to that. But then they have um, – uh, Renee should chime in on this one. I'm not quite sure how it works, but they have a reject class there. So that's kind of their sportsman, but it's a little bit more motor-specific on their uh, on their class. But, uh, again, it's it's well represented there. They have quite a few rejets. Uh, when Renee ran a, at uh, Salem a couple weeks ago when we were down there, that's why she ran in the sportsman class. She was shaking down her rejet motor for 
uh, Salem. So that's why she was running in our sportsman class. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I, I've never seen the reject class run before, so I'm, I get to see that. I've never seen the junior UAS run before, so I'm really excited to watch that class glow, go. Yes, we have a uh, sportsman class up here, which is basically a combination of the two. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see what all happens down there. There's just so much going on at this racetrack, and my head's going to be popping off. Yeah, stay tuned, because when, when we come back, uh, Mr. Jeffrey Eden has got the stupid racer action of the uh, week. So don't go anywhere. Racing. It's preparation. It's focus. It's attention to detail. And when you try to take shortcuts, it shows. At Speed City, Southern Oregon's karting headquarters, distributor for Ultramax, Legend, QRC, Bell Helmets, and K1 Race Gear, they don't roll like that. Speed City is committed to roll the way champions roll by keeping racers on track with knowledge, integrity, and performance. No shortcuts, no negativity, no other motives. You don't just have their word on it, you've got their name on it. So get back to having fun and get to calling Speed City. Speed City, LLC, keeping racers on track with quality service and friendship. 541 541- 531-1222. The three most expensive things you'll do in your life are buy a house, educate your kids, and go racing. What you don't need is another expense, and that's why you take your car and tow rigs to True Tech Automotive to ensure that they are maintained and repaired the right way with the right parts at the right price. And how's this for right? Extended to all racers is the In the Family 25% discount off of all preventative maintenance and repair labor. All you have to do is use the discount code NWRR to save. Now that's right. Get it done the right way. The True Tech way. True Tech Automotive, 6900 Northeast Highway 99, Hazeldale, Washington. 360-571-2302.
Oh, oops. Oh, my bad. Are we back? Oh, we're back. We're back. How much did you miss? We missed. You missed a lot. Oh, you might have even missed the stupid racer thing, right? Oh, no. So we're going to have to do that again. So here we go. Jeff Eden with the stupid racer <laughs> of the week. Don't go anywhere. Here he comes. <laughs> Down in Florida this last week. This is like the third or fourth time I've heard of this this year. Uh, gentleman's leading the race. Comes up the white flag. Old boy comes underneath him, does a slide job, takes the checkered. They make a little contact. No big deal. You know, it's it's racing. Uh, cool down lap. Kid comes around, jacks the old man up, spins him around on the front straight away, jumps out and starts wailing away. No respect. Um, None. I blame all of that on his upbringing, but that this <laughs> that's very true. Very. Um, Did he get booted for that? Uh, they didn't really say because it just happened this week. What what all was going to happen? That's what I posted on my Twitter account. Get rid of him. <laughs> yeah, you know you don't race here no more period see ya um this is like uh i don't know there's there's been some it, if you lose you lose you know come on guys why destroy somebody else's equipment well the, yeah and lose gracefully you know it's a it's a it's a learning factor well you the know? stands was all i mean they were all up and you can see them in the background they're all cheering and when that was all over with they were wanting the old man to get out of the car and beat the kid. <laughs> well, let me tell you, a lot of that stems from it. It just triggered to me. Um, uh, uh, you, you race at the local level, and some of the stuff they call, they any little contact, some people want to call, right? I mean, they, they think, oh, my goodness. You know, if it's not a blatant, just an absolute blatant stuff, where you and you know the difference. I don't mean where you go in and you're trying to get in on a spot and you you kind of nudge and you touch wheels and you kind of bump the guy and, and all. Well, people want to call for some of that stuff sometimes, and sometimes it's just racing, right? I mean, you're you're in a confined space on the same real estate. My God, there's going to be some touching. You're just there's just no way around it. So live with it. Some of it. Now, now I'm not talking about a punt. Yeah. Right. We all yeah. know what that is. I mean, uh, it's pretty obvious when something is just flat blatant. And my deal is you left enough room for him to be able to stuff it in there. So uh, I don't know. It could be part of that, too. You know, well, I blame part of it on NASCAR, too, though. NASCAR's let uh, come out with the, you know, boys be boys. And, you know, when you got people spinning people out on pit road, taking taking, you know, it should never happen. Yeah, it, it, it is. Well, you've also got a cool thing, too. Some of you, most of you, guys like One Time and The Rocket will probably, uh, if you and Matt Streeby as well, but if you follow sprint cars a lot around here, uh, Jeff's got a pretty interesting deal. Uh, it's called uh, Where Are They Now? And, uh, Jeff, go ahead. Well, I did a little deal with Kyle White last year. Kyle was gracefully enough to send me, and this isn't everybody, this is just what he could remember off the top of his head. If we've missed you, hey, let me know. We'll give you the recognition. But uh, these are guys that have raced the quarter midgets in Elma, Monroe, Yakima, uh, Graham, Portland, Skagit, all over the Northwest here. And and uh, first off comes the two brothers. There's uh, Reese and Chase Getz. They're second generation drivers. Their dad drove sprint car for years. And uh, last year, Reese won the track championship down at Grays Harbor with a 360. Uh, Logan Forler, he's out of Puyallup area. Um, actually, I think he's in Idaho now. But he runs uh, the ASCS National Tour. He runs all, you'll see his name all over the country. Um, uh, Jason Reed. Jason is uh, a second generation driver. Um, they're right out of Elma. He ran quarter midgets there at uh, at Elma, uh, his dad had still, I'm sure, would still be racing if it hadn't had a very bad accident where he actually was on top of the wall in turn three at Grays Harbor and it, it broke his neck. So he's unable to drive and he's gracious enough to put a car together for for Jason to drive when Jason's going to be all right. Um, got J.J. Hickel. J.J.'s out of Quilcene. Um he runs the a 360, which he basically they run uh, 
ASCS and the west side of things, they don't get too far out of right town. Well, Montana. Getz just won something big down in Arizona. Uh, he was. I thought he won that. No. Uh, he was finished in the top four or five. I could have swore I thought because they picked him up from college, right? And they were going down to an event, and I could have swore he won that. Yeah. If he did, I missed it. So. Well, anyway. And then there was a young lady by the name of Allison Journey. She ran there. She's running 360s. I have lost track of her. She was back in the Midwest running, but I couldn't find anything on her, so I don't know if she's done. But she was a good – She went. what she did here, she looked pretty good like she was going to make something. So hopefully she's still out running. And then – we got some of the people that have moved to the next size down that are running in the midget class. Uh, Ariel Biggs. Ariel's from right there in at uh, Gray's Harbor area. Um, she's been back in the Midwest. And mm -hmm. She hooked up with a team that are running the Toyota Motors, so big power. Uh, she said, uh, I follow her on Twitter, and she said it's been quite a learning curve on what um, – the difference in the power over the Ford Focus versus the right. Toyotas. So, and she's she's working on it. Um, Seth Hespy, out of uh, he's out of Snohomish up there. Seth is a grandson of Fred Brownfield, and Seth's run midgets. He runs a twelve hundreds there at Deming. Um, he was midget champion actually at Grays Harbor one year. Wow! So, uh, great shoe. I. Uh, I, I love to watch him drive. He's he's that good. He's good. Yeah. He needs to be in a 360, but, you know, like he said, until <laughs> things can quite get there, it, he'll just stay with Deming. So. Right. Um, got Annika Johansson. She was running uh, midgets there at Grays Harbor. Now they've switched over and went to a pavement car. So, uh, and I've only had a chance to watch her run once, and they had was having motor trouble. So I, didn't, I don't know how else she did this year. I wasn't. Uh, Tristan Thomas, Tristan Thomas rain run down there. Uh, he's running a midget Tristan. He's part of the Ford focus series, yes. right? Yeah. Yes, he is. Uh, chance crumb. He's going to be good. Uh, he's already good, yeah. but I mean, he's, yeah, he's, but, he's going to go places. No doubt. There, there you start. You started in the, in the quarter. quarter midgets. Midgets. Yep. Uh, Tanner Holm. He started in the quarter midgets and, uh, and then we step up to the, the guys that are running on the pavement right now, um, Tristan Hyder. Tristan Tristan is uh, quite the shoe. Tristan, have, from the rumor mill that I got, is going to a late model this next year. Good for him. Uh, wow. He's like a third or fourth, fifth generation driver. They just, they've been. His his dad's great people. I, I, I know Tristan uh, because uh, he used to run at Oakwood. We used to have the quarter midgets at Oakwood, and it was a, it was a tough um, you had, you had Hater, you had uh, Yoshi, you had uh, 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 the Blingmeister, Max Schroeder, who is already running, uh, he's running one of the, the scaled down late models, and he's doing a whale of a job, so uh, there's a, you're right, that's, that's cool, that's uh, really cool. Um, there's uh, Jake Woods, Jake's, Jake's a good little shoe, uh, Devin West. Devin West is a second generation driver. His dad uh, won, I think, five or six championships down at Grays Harbor. Mm -hmm. And the uh, and the years before they switched to modifies, they were super sports. I think then he won that, and then he actually won a year. He drove for a guy here in town from the Thurston County Transmission, uh, a late model, and went down there and spanked him at South Sound and won the championship down there. So. Wow, Devin Devin's got Devin's paid attention, and then uh, then we got a couple guys that are running in the six hundreds, and one that we've been talking about quite frequently today was Devin Borden. I watched him racing down at Banks this year, a couple different times. He's a stud. Uh, he is a stud. Let me tell you something. That you, his dad was one of the smoothest three sixty drivers. You. You didn't see Glenn out of shape very often or anything. It was the car was always going forward. It was a pleasure you had. If you got Ron Reed and and him, uh, uh, Van Dam, 
th- those guys got out there and got to running together. It was so fun to watch them. I yeah. Mean, his dad, very smooth driver, and the, evidently them kids paid attention. You know? Well, yeah, Devin especially because, I mean, he, uh, he's he been fast out of the gate, even in quarterman. I mean, he just, you know, every now and then you get a kid that just gets it. I For mean, sure. For I mean, sure. They just get it. It's I mean, n- at the age of six, this kid got it. Yeah. I, it, really? It's, it's nuts. Well, and, you know, and then uh, we got Mason Deneen. He, they, they yes, he, he runs at Salem quite a bit. Yeah, that's yeah. – uh, uh, his dad ran was running uh, a modified there at at Gray's Harbor. One of the few guys with a Pontiac motor. Yeah, running in the he and Sauce. Uh, <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, but that's just that's just some of them that are from around here. That that's very st- interesting stuff. Started man. out with the quarter midgets and have moved their way up. I've got uh, a couple of these gentlemen. I'm going to have on with my uh, what I got coming after the first of the year. So. Man, that's going to be awesome. Stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. Very much looking forward to this. This is this is our racing future here. I mean, and and you know, people might you know not be interested in this, but these are names we're going to hear for years to come because these kids are they're they're something. They're something to follow. They're something to watch. Uh, they're they're very good at what they do and. They they deserve what we're giving them. So you know, don't poo poo this people. Uh, you know, this is this is where our next Gordon's coming from. This is where our next uh, Stewart's coming from. Fact, you know, but but that brings up a point I, I want to say is, I believe that that is a perfect example of you can learn quite a bit by just watching if you're if you're truly paying attention well i think if you was to talk to glenn and glenn would probably still be racing a day and one of the things he said to me i mean when you're out in raymond you're <laughs> you're <laughs> ain't much there there isn't much there and you gotta have it takes special people and he just couldn't find the people that wanted to dedicate their time to to running the car mm-hmm. so basically that's when i mean he just said i've tried you know, he had a few that were there, but um, he, not the dedication right, that he, he needed. That's hard to. It's hard to get, especially when you're not driving. It's hard. It's hard to find. Well, you were good when when we had our when we had our time. To, I mean, but there, you know, a lot of times there's always an ulterior motive, or you know, if I was in the car, or if you know, I mean, it's it's. Uh, it's literally impossible. Like we used to watch Larry, my father-in-law. We used to watch him go down uh, to the to the races and run his super sport car by himself. He would load it. He would he would scale it. He would load it. He'd do all the maintenance. He'd load it. He'd get to the track. He'd unload it. He'd do all the stuff. He'd go race and he'd load it back up. You know, you can't do that anymore. No, you can't. You gotta have somebody that can watch the car, give you some feedback. I mean, it's the days of going racing by yourself are gone. Yeah, I, I mean, I they're, agree. They're, they're gone. A second and third set of eyes is is very critical. Um, I, I ran an indoor track in Raymond, uh, not far from uh, Borden's house. He was a big, big, big supporter of what I did out there. Um, he showed up and, and helped me put it all together and get it all going. Uh, but the, the one thing I can say, the one thing that sticks in my mind about Glenn's, uh, well, I guess he's junior. He's, yeah. he's the dad of, of Borden. I mean, of uh, Devin and Carlson, but uh, he came down one night with a cage cart and it was just so phenomenal. I mean, he would come out of the corner and stand on the gas. This thing would carry the front wheels all the way down the straightaway. He would stab the brake, set the freaking thing, throw it into the corner. Out he would come and the wheels would come up and all the way down the straightaway with the wheels in the air. And we're not talking uh, two or three inches a foot of air underneath the front of this thing and he would drive it all the way down the straightaway and into the corner it was phenomenal he's he is a great driver uh to just to add to that though you know he would he would get out of that and he would not move well for the next two days you know (laughs) because of all the time he spent in these cars getting himself beat up you know his his back is bad now because of that and so he throws 
all of his knowledge and everything into his kids' program, and that's why they do so good. Last year, I was down there in Salem and uh, at, at, at the Cage Cup and, and helped him out as well as, as helped Terry out with the show. But just to watch him deal with all of his carts that his kids run, you know, I, I was standing there holding up the back of one of his kids' carts Well, he came up with this brainstorm of switching all these tires around. He knew exactly which size tire was on which corner of the car. So there I am. He peels off both tires on the back of this cart. He runs off to his other cart, and somebody else lifts it up. He peels the tires off of that, and next thing I know, there's tires going in every direction, three different carts, and they all go back on it. And wouldn't you know that each one of those kids was in the front of their class. He made the right call. Mm-hmm. And, and there was only five minutes i was still holding up the back of the cart when they were asking him to come up to the line but he made the right call at that point i mean th- that that family is just amazing to me just it, amazing it, 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 people don't understand that there's there's so much more than just being able to you know get in the car turn the wheel i mean there's a you know i mean that that's I'm not saying that's the easy part, but but it is. I mean, for the most part, that that is the easy part. I mean, it, it's 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 being able to, you know, like we talked about last week about moving up. So you've got to be ready. You've got to be able to communicate. You've got to be able to understand and know what you want from that car, and you have to be patient enough to be able to decipher what it wants. And more importantly, you got to be honest and, and say, you know, maybe the car's better than I am right now. Right. I mean, th- th- there's been times and, and that's a tough one because everybody wants to blame the car when things aren't right. Well, it isn't always the car. I mean, a lot of times it is. But I mean, let's face it. I mean, in my case, it's usually not the car. Well, it, <laughs> it, it, it wasn't in mine either for the most part. I mean, usually, you know, I mean, you know, you're not driving in hard enough or you're, you know, Amen. it's just it, it, there's just a ton of different things that sometimes you're just off. Right. Yes, I mean, it's sir. it's uh, but yeah. And I think that's one of the things that I enjoyed the most when I was racing was, yeah, I loved sitting in the car. Nothing better than, you know, what did uh, what did uh, uh, Mike Van say? He ran a tour race one, one time and, and I said, well, so so how was it? And he goes, oh, man, he said, you know, it was it was delightful. He says, where else where else can you go and have a 30 minute or <laughs> orgasm (laughs) i I mean that's how fun it is to be in those cars i mean it's awesome but i enjoyed the i didn't have the money to do it really i mean i didn't have the money to go buy all these hot dog parts so we we built a ton of stuff and and it's neat when you can go out there and run with the fast guys with not having spent a whole bunch yeah and it's even with drag racing it still comes back with drag racing it's uh, you can have the fastest car out there. If you can't get it off the starting line, you can't drive. It don't matter what you have. Amen to that. It's yeah. just that, you know. And you hear that all the time. Well, they got money and they got this and they, you know what? Quit poop pooing it because if you had money, you'd be doing the same darn thing, right? 60 foot makes you or breaks you. Yep. So, yeah, that's, uh. Yeah, that that's that's an interesting story. I'll be uh, that'll be great after the first year to see that. We've got a, a bunch of cool things coming up after the first of the year when we start our in the groove show. We're gonna try to do some video stuff. We're gonna try to. Um, so if you know somebody that uh, really deserves to be on here, I mean, most everybody does, but I mean, you got interesting like Borden. That's gonna be three. Um, I'd like to get the Gibbs. That's four generations of for sure of racers there. You know, I mean, it's. Uh, there's a lot of neat, really neat stuff within our racing community, even just around here. Yep. It, it's it's uh, yeah. It, it's I mean, if you want to go drag racing, you got the Austins. I mean, Pat Pat ran for uh, years. Al- well, he ran an alcohol funny car and a top fuel dragster. Uh, yep. Same same weekends all over the country. Uncle Bucky. Uncle Bucky was. One of the first ones around here. He ran nitro, and then he switched to alcohol. And so did know, Walt. You know, Walt. It, it's just there's so much history within this area up here that it's crazy. Yeah. You know, and, and who's to say we don't have good racers around here? Oh, we we do. We just don't. we often get overlooked because we're from the Northwest, and it's not known. It's not the racing hotbed. You know, it is. But 
Man, you look at even the late models. You got Garrett Evans, Gary Lewis, uh, Harry Jefferson, all the Jason Jefferson. I mean, good night. We got some quality guys from around here. Down at South Sound, Bob Presley had the, what was the old boy from the body shop up there? At, God, I can't think of his name now. Uh, had the body shop in Lakewood. Oh, Eaton. Eaton, yeah, right. Oh, Eaton. God, yeah, yeah. The, I used to dude, love the king. I mm. used to love to watch him down there at, at South Sound because coming out of two, there was a dip if you stayed down on the low side, and you could just bury it because that dip wouldn't let you get up the racetrack. Yeah. And he just used that to his advantage. Here, everybody's up smacking the wall, and he's down there go just shooting by everybody. Well, I don't know if you've seen some of the old pictures that George Wade has been putting up on Facebook, but they were they are – they are absolutely epic because it was from the era that, I mean, nobody even knows the love I had for these things. I mean, steel-bodied race cars are always, always will be the the greatest thing ever, and it's a shame that they're gone. Well, you would have loved it. <laughs> you would have loved it because the Grays Harbor uh, Hall of Fame down there I went to one of their banquets because one of the, the guys that works with Chris has been a, it's been with Chris forever, and Dale was being inducted, so we went down there and and they had books and books and books across the front of the table. And it was everything from Portland. Oh my god! I mean, so they had stuff, all the old programs old there, programs, uh. old photos. It was like, oh my gosh, just loved every minute. Of well, it. I mean, where else could you go where you, where you could see a, a 1972 Mercury Cougar? As a stock car. I mean, or a Ford Fairmont, right? The ugliest car probably ever made. But they looked so cool. With I mean... You forgot about the Granada. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the, you know, actually, as a stock car, the Ford Granada was a nice-looking ride. We called it a Grenada. <laughs> but, but, I mean, you know, and, and, and I think the stands would be full again if, if you brought back... If, if the late models and stuff weren't all this you know, fiberglass, plastic stuff. If it was steel-bodied stuff, I think that would be a cool class to well, even then, bring, like a retro class or something where you had to run steel-bodied stuff. In, in, in a way, you do have that run on the pavement with uh, the vintage modifieds that run. Those They're, are cool. You know, they, um, one of the guys that drives for Walrath, uh, he used to run one of them until they got to the point where the guys, you know, instead of going out and having fun, all of a sudden, there was a late model motor got put into the car instead of keeping it at a 355, you know, have fun, four-speed transmission. Ooh. You know, they start they started getting away from going mm -hmm. too high-tech. Mm -hmm. So they they lost a lot of racers. I remember the first time I seen them, there was like 25 of them down there taking the green for the A-Main. Woo-hoo! Yeah, see, and you and got... Ten, twelve. Yeah. See, and you got to blame that on the guy. You know, if once you allow anything like that, it was kind of like when Hillier came out. You had to run a nine inch, and, and he swore up and down, "Nope, I'm not going to allow quick changes at all." And one time, he allows a, a quick change, and it changes the whole course of the way things are going. So, I mean, we kind of got off on a tangent there, but careful. It, but but it, it, it's. You're, it was you're, it was an epic tangent. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it's what we're all about. It, it was. I mean, and is it, that's, but but I don't know. That's the draw for me is racing. It, it, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it is still the people. I I, I mean, for me, it is everything I've been involved with so far racing wise. The people have been absolutely. Uh, Kravitz, Kravitz bring that to 67 Cougar, Cougar <laughs> with with side pipes. <laughs> that, that be, that, you know, I, I'm just going to kind of close with this one because my buddy, you know, Dave Goulet. Oh, yeah. We were <laughs> we were on the road and we were, you know, how you just get to chit chatting and blah, blah, blah. And he says, hey, yeah, I, 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 I met this new girl. And she's, you know, I, I, I like her. I said, oh, yeah. He said, yeah. I said, so. Tell me about her. I mean, we all. He, I said, well, I mean, she good looking. And he says, well, he says, uh, I said, well, tell, okay, what's she like? He says, well, let me tell you, she drives a '67 Cougar with side pipes. What's that tell you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, oh, good night. I mean, oh, uh, now you talk about epic. <laughs> that that was, you know, and, and and when you go racing, the road trips, the road trips are are darn near as fun as the actual event. You know, I mean, it's just 
there's a lot of good stuff that comes from racing if if uh kids sound asleep in the back yeah. <laughs> miss miss the main because they had to go to sleep i mean it's it's just cool stuff um wow that's pretty cool oh well we got one more show uh before christmas it'll be our uh merry christmas show and i and i think double m is going to be in the house nice so um that the winning car owner the winning his yeah we can get to talk to him about that first win as a car owner and uh i, I don't know there's gonna be some cool stuff you know I, here's some good news um brent meyer picks up a ride from speed city wow nice yes they want him to drive they're gonna they're gonna have him drive the uh in the far cart class and then he's also got a new Ultramax, or yeah a new Ultramax. He's got that. He's thinking about maybe uh, they're going to put him on an Ultramax in there. But he's also got his uh, LO206 that he'll be. I don't know if he'll be out this weekend. Um, maybe. Uh, but uh, that's exciting. So Speed City stepping up. Yes, they are. I it mean, a, you know, great but, organization. But one thing about it, you put somebody like the gentleman that drove the an all-star cart the other day you get him jeremy in, yeah. yeah you get him in there one time and all of a sudden he's got to have one right it's not it's, it's but but i think they 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 reeled that in just a little bit and and he's still going to be running heavy and stuff like that because yeah but you still once you get that speed you know as well as i do it's hard to go backwards you bet it is <laughs> but 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 to run one of those things consistently up front uh, is is well, a whole is a whole nother breed of cat. I mean, it's you you got to really. I mean, I you know, I, I've said it once. I've said it a million times. Um, these UAS guys are they are some of the best in the business. I mean, there's just no getting around that. I mean, I, I, I don't I don't care what anybody says. I and they should be getting paid. I mean, if those clone guys are making 119 grand a year, <laughs> the, the, the UAS guys are you know I mean. Something's wrong. Looks I mean, like Mike Clark stepping up also to help out Brent Meyer. So that's yeah. nice to hear also. They, uh, yeah. Well, he, actually, he gave Brent a, a motor to run in the fart cart class. So Speed City stepped up with the Ultramax, and uh, Clark Family Racing put up uh, the uh, the, yeah, the fart cart motor. Nice. You were, you were going to uh, tell us some. Oh, yeah. Before we close. Thank you very much, Jeff. So. Um, first of all, we, we get to go to the classic because of the kindness of one of the show sponsors. Uh, his name is Scott McDowell. Um, he had given Lippy a couple tickets for some folks that couldn't make it. He, and he said, Hey, I thought you guys would want to go down there. So he, he hooked us up with the tickets. However, so last Speedway show that we're there now, you guys may be bored by this, whatever, but I just got to tell you, this is how awesome uh, people are. Um, you may or may not know the Millers. If you're part of the Cascade Carding Association, uh, you know the Millers. Um, they, they're they new. They just got uh, struggling. Uh, they've been struggling a little bit. When they first got started, you would go there, and their carts were doing nothing but struggle. The thing wouldn't run. It, it was slobbering all over itself. I mean, it, anybody else would have kicked it off the cliff and said, uh, forget it, I'm done. But this guy always had a smile on his face. He was always, well, we're going to go back. We're going to work on it. We'll be better next time, you know, whatever. The poor guy never got to us. And then when it did run, it would run for maybe two laps, and then it would start crapping out again. So finally one race this summer, Mike Collins got over there and and helped him out, got it running. I guess they had some ignition issues and some carburetor issues, but they got those fixed. And he didn't win, but he comes in, and he is so excited because he says, I got to run with them, right? I mean, most other people would just be upset, but, you know, he's happy because he got to actually run with them. So, um, and then Mr. Mr. Miller, Steve's dad, who is a, just a quality guy, they own uh, Miller uh, Kitchen and Bath. They do a lot of remodels and stuff like that. You know, he'd been telling me, yeah, I want to help out the show. We're, we're avid listeners. They listen in all the time. And, uh, you know, it was like, hey, Mr. Miller, it's cool. I, you know, you don't, you don't have to do that. I mean, I appreciate it, but you don't have to do that. It's really, so that's really kind of all that was said of it. 
Well, then I called him a week before uh, the last Salem race. And because I wanted to say, I said, hey, man, you guys should be at Salem. I haven't seen you. You need to be at Salem. So, you know, I said, so I see him Saturday. They show up there and I go, wow, did you get my message? And they go, no, no, I didn't. I said, well, I called, left the message, said, you guys should be here. He says, well, we're here. You know, and then he says, you know, and I told you I was going to help you with the show. So I, I'm I'm going to. So I'm loading up my gear. It's, the races are over. I'm loading up my gear. And Mr. Miller walks up and he hands me a piece of paper. And it, 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 it's a check. And so I, I, I grab it. I go, what's this? And I look at it and I hand it back to him. I go, I can't, you know. So he says, no, seriously, I want you, uh, I, I want you to take it. Just please take it. So I look at it and it's a check for $400, right? So I'm, I, I'm thinking, whoa, man, wow. I mean, I, you don't even know what to say, right? I mean, it's like, I mean, a hundred would have been, I mean, but 400, I mean, I'm going, you gotta be kidding me. And, and, and then to, to, to finish me off, he says, yeah, and I gave one to Lippy too. So he gave Lippy a check for $400. And he says, you guys go down there to Arizona and have a beer on me and really enjoy yourselves. We appreciate all you do. And what do you say what, to what, somebody what, what, like what, that? What, what there, do you there, say? I mean, thank you is not enough. No, it's not. But. It's a start. But, and, and he's very appreciative to that uh, and and doesn't expect anything in return for it. They, they are a great family. They support so, so much of what we do up here in the Northwest. Um, they've been racers for years. They've been drag racing. They've done everything. Uh, somehow we got our hooks into them. I don't know how we did it, but we did. They came out. They had a good experience. And from there, they have grown from a, a single cart team, uh, father and son, to having three in their in their camp. And uh, now I think they are one, two, three, four, four or five uh, other drivers that they've brought in and, and put in other carts that are out there making laps in our in our classes and having a great time and you know they were a big 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 part of our night race they're the ones that sponsored our lights uh that that ran for the betty boop that night they're just uh, an, a great group a great ah. camp uh then and, and they just want uh they want us to succeed and it's a it's such a great feeling to have people like that behind you and uh you know you you, you kind of sometimes get down in the dumps and then something like this comes along and it's like wow lippy that is the truth because i mean i swear i i was going round and round you know is is is, is you know is it are we making a difference? Is it mattering? I mean, should, you know, is, is, you know, is, is it even going to sh- go on? Right. Yep. And, and, uh, so you get that and you just go, wow. So I, I mean, I know this probably isn't enough, but Mr. Miller, if you're tuned in tonight and you're listening to this, um, I'll, I'll like, I just want you to know, I, it, it mean, uh, <laughs> It, it's probably one of the coolest things that has ever uh, happened to me. So I can't even tell you how much it means. It's 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 just incredible. So we are truly thankful for both Scott McDowell at Scott Sealcoat and for uh, the Millers, both the Steves at. Uh, well, know this: I, I wouldn't be going if it wasn't if it wasn't for Scott and and. You know, and and you know how you get to worrying. God, am I gonna? You know, it was gonna be tight to go anyway. Absolutely. And so uh, all this did was was kind of take the lift a little bit of the burden off, and and uh, well, not a little bit, a lot. <laughs> so anyway, I know we kept you guys over, but I, we just thought that was um, that's some of the cool stuff that you get to get, I guess, when you're involved in this uh, pretty amazing sport. So. Um, definitely thanks to the Kravitzes and the Bridges, Chisholm. Yeah, my sister, Jamie, thank you for tuning in. That's like, that's like a Christmas present right there, you know? 
So, uh, yeah. So we're going to be back next week. Uh, double M in the house. And um, Jeffrey going to be in the house. So come with your... Uh, well, let, let, what do you say we dress up? As? Something Christmas. Oh, God. We could wear Santa hats or, you know, a, Sa- or a Christmas shirt or... I'll wear a green one. Come on, Lip. You're going to be an elf. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to be, Jeff? Yeah. Are you going to be Rudolph? <laughs> Santa. You're gonna be Santa, yeah. Santa. With, with this belly. Well, can we sit? On, will we be able to sit on your lap and tell you what we want for Christmas? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, you guys! Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Um, we'll get you hooked up. We'll let you know what's going to be happening next week on the Northwest Race Report. But uh, if you happen to not going to be able to tune in, uh, here's an early uh, Merry Christmas. Maybe we even sing a Christmas carol on the show next week. That'll take some preparation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, holy. No, I won't ruin it now. <laughs> yeah. But Wait be sure kill, you <laughs> kill the spirit next week. <laughs> so be sure you tune in next week, 630 right here. Go to terrybridges.com backslash NWRR live and uh, check us out. We'll have a great show for you. We love you. And if somebody's on the bottom... Taking the low side. Lip, what do you got to do? God is good and go to the high side. Amen. Go to the high side, y'all. We love you. Thanks for all the support. We appreciate it. See you next week. Hey, race fans, this is Brandy. You're listening to the Northwest Race Report with Terry Bridges.